The film kicks off with the detective Mike speeding towards a wedding, making his friend Marcus feel queasy. Mike stops at a convenience store and gives Marcus 85 seconds to fetch some ginger. Suddenly a robber storms in, holds a gun to Marcus's head and demands money. Mike charges in, tells Marcus to get back in the car, and distracts the robber. In the ensuing chaos, Mike shoots the robber in the leg and asks the cashier to call 911. Afterwards, Mike and Marcus continue their journey to Mike's wedding. The ceremony proceeds smoothly, but during the celebration, Marcus suffers a heart attack. His soul drifts away from his body, observing the chaos as he is rushed to the hospital. On a mystical island, he meets his former police captain Conrad, who tells him it's not his time and he must return to the living. Marcus awakens in the hospital bed, quickly removes his medical wires, and heads to the rooftop. He informs Mike that although he was welcomed into heaven, he knows he must stay in the world for now. Mike is relieved by Marcus's recovery, but Marcus warns that a severe storm is approaching, and Mike will face a difficult decision. Meanwhile, a cartel's banker arrives via helicopter to meet the cartel's boss, McGrath. McGrath coerces the banker into transferring all his funds to the account of the deceased police captain Conrad. Afterward, McGrath kills everyone present and concocts a story that the banker's mistress, distraught over his refusal to leave his wife, murdered the banker, his bodyguard, and then herself. Back at home, Marcus throws a fit over being prohibited from consuming sugar, snacks, or carbonated drinks. That night, Mike experiences a harrowing nightmare about the murder of Conrad at the hands of his illegitimate son. Shaking off the disturbing dream, he wakes up to find a press conference accusing Conrad of corruption. Determined to get to the bottom of it, Mike storms into the meeting and confronts his colleagues, demanding to know if they were aware of these accusations. They reveal that they've known for two weeks but kept it from Mike and Marcus due to their close ties with Conrad. Mike reminds them that Conrad was the reason they all had their jobs, but his colleagues insist the evidence against the captain is compelling. An FBI agent leading the meeting explains that during their investigation, all informants and witnesses were systematically murdered. After thorough research, they identified a pattern and concluded that someone within the police force was leaking information to the cartel. Recently, a banker was found dead, and his phone containing years of communication with Conrad was seized by the police. Furious, Mike accuses them of pinning the blame on Conrad because he is no longer alive to defend himself and vows to clear his friend's name. Just then, Conrad's daughter Judy bursts into the room, demanding access to all physical evidence against her father. Mike tries to reassure her of his support, but she angrily rebuffs him, holding him responsible for her father's death due to his illegitimate son. Determined to uncover the truth, Mike and Marcus head to the prison to question Mike's son, Armando, about Conrad's alleged cartel connections. Armando explains that certain police officers wanted Conrad dead because he was about to expose corruption among high-ranking officials. However, he can't identify the officer involved, as those dealings were managed by his now-deceased mother. Meanwhile, when the conspirators attempt to access Captain Howard's computer, a pre-recorded video is sent to Mike and Marcus. The video warns them of corruption within federal and state law enforcement. In the video, Howard uses the phrase Coke bottle as a code, revealing that he had shared information with their former hacker colleague Fletcher. The cartel realizes that a message has been sent to the two cops, and since more dead cops would only draw unwanted attention, they decide to keep an eye on them. Mike and Marcus head to Fletcher's warehouse, which has now been converted into a club and art gallery. They try to convince Fletcher that Conrad instructed them to meet him, but he refuses to give them any information until they provide the code word. Before they can reveal the code and get their answers, a hitman hired by the cartel shoots Fletcher. As Mike and Marcus draw their guns, hidden conspirators open fire. They fight back, but the attackers manage to escape. Captain Rita Sakata arrives to investigate the scene and asks Mike and Marcus why they were there with Fletcher. Mike makes up an excuse since he can no longer trust anyone in the department. While examining the club, Detective Kelly finds a QR code hidden in the wall art. Scanning it reveals a second video from Conrad. In the video, Conrad explains that nine years ago, a cocaine shipment meant to be raided went missing, indicating a snitch within their ranks. He tells them all the relevant files are in a storage unit, providing the information needed to continue the investigation. Meanwhile, Armando is attacked by several conspirators disguised as inmates and prison guards, but he manages to survive. Mike urgently goes to Rita, telling her that Armando was attacked because he can identify people involved with the cartel. He asks her to transfer Armando to a safer location in Miami for proper investigation. The chief agrees, and they proceed with the transfer. However, the conspirators manage to infiltrate the plane and eliminate all the pilots and staff, causing the plane to crash. 
the conspirators jump out with parachutes while Mike, Marcus, and Armando head to the pilot's cabin, managing to steer the plane into a lake, increasing their chances of survival. The trio survives the crash, but the police become suspicious of them. They label them as armed and dangerous men who must be captured. The head of the police tells Rita that Mike and Marcus used the crash as a tactic to help Armando escape, as the pilot left a message stating that they were hostile before the plane went down. Rita, however, tries to tell them that it seems like a framing scheme as the conspirators might have forced the pilot to leave that message, but no one listens to her. The conspirators and law enforcement deploy forces to hunt them down. Their families are investigated, and news spreads about them being dangerous. On the other hand, Mike Marcus and Armando find a hideout in the woods and steal a car to make their escape easier. Eventually, they enter a city where Mike remembers an old friend who owns a club. They head to her club and ask her for guns, money, and phones. Instead, she pulls a gun on Mike, calling in local gang members who had been notified by the cartels about the $5 million bounty on them. The police receive a tip and head to the club. Meanwhile, another local gang attacks the first gang, leading to a shootout. The trio hide in a vehicle during the chaos. They try to escape, but it catches fire. The police arrive, and Judy starts shooting at Armando, determined to avenge her father's death. The engine catches fire, and they immediately jump out of the car before it explodes. Mike and Marcus take Armando to their ammo officer Derry's house, where they find Kelly. They begin searching for the imposter by showing various pictures of officers to Armando. After a full day's work, they identify the cartel boss as James McGrath, a DEA agent who was captured and tortured by the cartel years ago. He betrayed his associates to save himself, leading to his team's demise. McGrath then started working with the cartel and gradually rose to become its boss. Mike reports this to Rita who is at home with her fiancé Adam Lockwood. Meanwhile, cartel conspirators send men to kidnap Marcus's family, but his Marine son-in-law Reggie manages to kill them all and protect the family. On the other hand, Judy's daughter Callie visits Mike's wife Christine and both are abducted by the conspirators. Mike realizes that McGrath could know they have a lead on him through Lockwood, who has access to information via Rita. He calls Rita to warn her and she takes her gun, telling Lockwood she's heading to the office. Lockwood instantly offers to accompany her. Rita pulls out her gun in the elevator, but Lockwood overpowers her. As the elevator door opens, Kelly and Derry rush to help her. They arrest Lockwood and use a voice fishing machine to send a message to McGrath in Lockwood's voice, instructing him to move the hostages to a specific location. Mike and the others decide to keep the operation small, knowing they will lose the upper hand if the cartel is informed about the raid. On the other side, Christine notices that McGrath has two fingernails extracted and asks if he was tortured. He replies that he plans to do the same to her husband and then kill him in front of her eyes. Mike devises a plan to surround the former Alligator amusement park from all sides. They intend to use Lockwood as bait and open fire as soon as McGrath's plane lands, ensuring they save Callie and Christine. As they approach the area, Darn warns them that even though the amusement park is abandoned, alligators are still in the surrounding waters. Lockwood gets off the plane and tells McGrath to bring the hostages into his plane so they can leave. Mike tries to aim for McGrath but has a panic attack and can't focus. A huge alligator appears in the waters, causing Armando hiding underwater to struggle. Mike fails to take the shot, and Armando is spotted by the cartel members, triggering a gunfight. McGrath retreats with the hostages, and the cops engage in a battle. Marcus slaps Mike to snap him out of his panic, and they begin fighting vigorously. Judy hears about the chaos and decides to head there with her team. Lockwood attempts to betray both sides by fleeing in the plane. But before it can get too far, Rita shoots at it causing it to crash. Lockwood somehow manages to escape and part of the plane crashes into the building, and Armando quickly shields Callie from the debris and jumps with her to the first floor. However, the impact causes Marcus to fall into the water accidentally. The alligator catches up to him and he tries to fend it off, but it bites his arm. Mike quickly jumps into the water and stabs the alligator in the eye freeing Marcus, and they both climb back into the building. Lockwood tries to escape, but Rita finally makes a blow that makes him fall into the water and get eaten by the alligator. Meanwhile, Armando protects Callie with all his might, and she rushes to help him when he finally collapses after fighting numerous men. He manages to get up and take her out of the building. Judy arrives at the site and frantically searches for Callie, outside with a heavily injured Armando. Marcus reaches the shore and experiences a deja vu of the moment when Conrad told him it isn't his time to die. Before he can react, McGrath holds a gun to his head. Mike arrives at the scene, shocked to see both Marcus and Christine being held hostage. 
McGrath demands that Mike choose between his best friend and his wife. Remembering Marcus's earlier words, Mike says, Marcus once told me it's not his time to die yet, and shoots Marcus in his bulletproof vest before shooting McGrath in the head. This quick action allows both Christine and Marcus to free themselves. Meanwhile, Judy finds Armando and aims at him. However, Callie steps in between them, explaining that Armando saved her life. Grateful for his bravery, Judy decides to let Armando escape. Mike helps Armando onto a motorboat and says a final goodbye. With their names and Conrad's name cleared and all the corrupt officers exposed, Mike and Marcus celebrate with friends and family. Thanks for watching and see you next time.